YouTube family. So it's been a minute since I've done a video and actually it took me a few days to even do this video that I'm doing today. But this will be the first video I've done since I've had surgery on June 1. And I kind of want to talk about that experience um, in regards to reptiles and the importance of having that support for those rare times that you're not physically available for your reptiles. Um, how I'm feeling, a lot of people have asked, and I appreciate all the love that I received through text, inbox, calls. Um, the fact that I'm sitting here doing this video tells you I feel a lot better. Um, even a week ago, I couldn't, I, I just didn't have this kind of energy. Um, I'm still processing um, the challenges coming out of surgery into what we call surgical menopause but I have not had the experiences that you know a lot of women have I've actually been pretty good through this um, the only experience that I really experienced and not not too bad is the um, temperature control of my own body but my husband what he did was he installed a so the home has central air of course but because of the reptiles and because of them, my husband and my son, their body temperatures are running like 20 degrees different from mine. So he installed a window unit in our bedroom so that when I get overwhelmed and I'm really hot, I can go into my bedroom and literally um, cool off more than and quicker than, you know, necessary. So um, that's been pretty good. Um, Outside of that, I am so proud of my husband and my son through this process. I think the biggest, the hardest part for me was the three days I had to stay in the hospital after the surgery. Um, and because I was so heavily medicated, I, I really couldn't see my animals. And when I did see them, I felt so bad. Like, um, you know, my husband doesn't doesn't handle my reptiles um but i'll talk about something later that he through this process he did and i was very amazed um my son always handled them when i'm here so my larger snakes with all the snakes what i did was i fed them a week before i went into surgery um, because one of the biggest issues for me was or is not the reptiles themselves it's i don't like to see my animals um in urine or their feces and things like that so i knew that no one was going to be able to do the cleaning like on the level that i would do for my animals so i tried to limit the amount of excretion they would have by feeding them a week in advance letting them have that big excretion before i had surgery and then i had no intentions on feeding them until probably a week after I got out of surgery, which worked in the, for the most part, but some of them needed feeding before that. And, you know, my husband and my son, we, we worked it out when I came home from the hospital. The day I came home from the hospital, I would tell you, I just was so happy to see all of my animals and I just broke down crying because I just couldn't touch them. Um, even now today, I cannot pick up my larger retex. Um, I can pick up the babies like this golden child cow here. Um, but I can't pick up my Motley Mochino or y'all know my heart, my T'Challa, which is my um, golden child, um, my Motley golden child son. We had to definitely clean them several times since I've been here, including the larger ones. So one of the things y'all heard me talk about before, and I'm so glad that I did this, the two larger retics are trained to come out and go back in on their own. Except for the, well, not except, the Molly Golden Child comes out easily. It's, she never wants to go back in. She's the one who roams the house. So one day, she literally, my husband was like, oh, I'm going to get her back down. I said, I can do it. Watch me. So it was still why I was pretty much out of it. Um, I couldn't do much. And she went all the way upstairs. Now, upstairs is where my uh, Yorkie pool is. Um, of course, that door was closed because my Yorkie pool is good food for her that retic and her sides um and my rottweiler and it was like she always goes upstairs but this time it was more of like let me hurry up and get up there like she knew that i was incapacitated and then my husband and them wasn't going to be able to redirect it it was hysterical so i ended up having to get out the bed 
and encourage her to come to me, um, which my husband found amazing. And because I couldn't pick her up, what my husband did, guys, and for those who know my husband and our story with reptiles, he literally placed his hand on the golden child to scoop her, to help get her on me enough for me to be able to guide her to my son to get her back downstairs. It was absolutely phenomenal. And I'm laughing in my head because I didn't want to say anything. I'm like, do he even realize he's doing this, right? So after it was done, I said, babe, do you realize you touched the child? He said, don't remind me. I feel like I just jumped out of a plane. <laughs> so that was funny. Um, I also saw with my husband, because he had to, like, pick up the hook and move around some of the boas to clean out things. And I was just so impressed because, but guys, he doesn't do snakes at all. Um, he doesn't do the tegels at all. Who The tegels, I would say, suffered the most through this. Because I can't bend over. Right now, even today, I still can't pen, bend over. So where their tents are, I will literally have to put my hand under them to pick them up. And I don't have the abdominal strength yet to do that. Um, but I've been able to feed them, um, open their tents, look at them, you know, um, just let them know that I'm present. But I think they suffered the most. My uh, Larry, my Asian water monitor, although a lizard, didn't suffer so much because, you know, Larry is very tamed. Um, he's a product of nerds, so he came to me tamed. And all I had to do was maintain that with him. So with him and why, in the way he's positioned in his temporary enclosure, I can just go in that room and place my hand under and he'll come up on my arm. The only thing is, is due to the type of surgery I'm having, I had, I'm open to infection. So I have to put on like a big hoodie. So, you know, naturally Asian water monitors sometimes scratch. And um, that's the only thing with him. So I've been able to engage with Larry. Um, I actually changed out his enclosure uh, the other day. I helped my son. So I felt very productive with that. I think overall I'm getting better with it all except for still not having the strength to pick up my big babies and I miss that although they've been out uh, my son I can like I said I can get them to come out my son has been picking them up but that's my thing so I do miss them a lot so I'm hoping by next week I have more of that strength back I do feel like I'm getting better and better every day so enough about that so as I was down some people have reached out to me and today I'm going to specifically address Brandy's Johnson, which is one of the young ladies who's in our black reptile group and she sent me a few questions regarding Just my you know experience and how did I get to this level with the reptiles? And I just wanted to kind of I told her when she sent me I responded didn't I Brandy? I did but um, Some of this was more conversational um, And I just kind of wanted to address it because this is a question that I get often um, although I don't think I don't know what, he, what she's doing. Star, what do you know? So also, um, although I will start with the first question. So let me just say, when did you really start collecting? And that was as a young girl, which most of us in reptiles, um, we got into this just being young herpers. Now, the funny thing is I grew up in a place called Cherry Hill in Baltimore, Maryland, where I grew up on the water and there was a lot of wooded area. Being a young girl, I was not afraid to go in the woods at all. If you ask me today to go in the woods, to go herping and pick up snakes, I, I'm not doing it. I want the snake to come from the breeder. I want to know the breeder and the background of the breeder and the snakes he breeder, all of that. I'm not just picking up random animals. So that changed as I got older. But um, my desire and love for them, I used to sneak them in the house as a child. Um, not just snakes. Um but I'll say, uh, not bugs, because not all bugs, but I'll say like grasshoppers were a big thing um, when, when me growing up. Um, some smaller spiders, um, like the tarantulas, I was not into nothing like that when I was younger. That's something brand new to me. Um, garter snakes were really, really big around there. So, you know, we, we played with them a lot, but it pretty much, my passion started young. Now, when I got about 18, 17, 18, it went crazy. 
Um, and my plan then started was to save because I knew, you know, I, I knew I was going to be a, a mother. I knew I was going to have children at some point in my life, but I knew that I wasn't going to go insane with reptiles until my children were out the house. So there's only one still in the home. And of course, you know, that's Michael. Um, and Michael would be me, be with me, um, forever, um, due to his disability. He don't think so, but his mama ain't not putting him out there in that world. Um, unless he buying a house right next to me or something, but no. Um, so yeah, so Michael will always be with me, but I said that I intentionally waited until my children got grown because of the expense. So, you know, I'm not, I'm not going to slight my kids or my animals. So raise your children and then I'm crazy with it. And I saved all those years. So how I can just do what I do, I mentioned it before, is that I have a reptile account. It doesn't affect nothing, no other accounts that me and my husband have. This was an account that I saved for this purpose. Um, most of my bonuses that I get from work goes into my reptile account. Um, so my animals don't want for anything. Uh, if it comes down to anything, it's gonna eventually, I'm gonna have so many animals that I, I, I lack space and I'm gonna need a bigger home. Um, but other than that, when even when we bought this home, we thought of it in terms of me, animals, my dogs, my reptiles, my turtles, or everything else that I had. So um, that's pretty much it. I always, I, I choose animals over people any day. That level of loyalty, respect, and genuine love um, that comes from my different types of animals um, that understanding, that collaboration, that's what I expect in people and you don't get that often. So I prefer animals over people. Now, the other question she had was, was my husband always supportive? Well, he had to be or he wouldn't be my husband. Um, so, you know, he always knew about my passion. So no one not just with reptiles. I just don't think that people should enter into relationships, period, with people who try to alter their passions. Now, don't get me wrong. We all grow with people or we grow away from people, one of the two. But if you take, if someone is picking at your passion, it will never work. They're taking the core of you and removing it away from you. And in essence, by nature, just in spiritual nature, you're going to move towards your passion if you want happy. Otherwise, you'll be miserable for the rest of your life. So it's just like my children. Um, you can't separate me and my kids. You can separate me and my passion of animals. So he's very supportive. Although, you know, well, one day I like to come home and see him with a 12-footer around him. Yes, it probably will never happen in this lifetime. But the fact that he will buy me a snake that will end up being 12-foot plus, works for me so that's our compromise um but he he understands that i love these animals so and he tell people that you know people are like how can you live in a house with all those snakes or all of those lizards and he said man he make my wife happy and that's all that matters to him so and i appreciate that about him and like i say even going through this experience he literally had to get the grit and you know be me while i was while i was down um, then the question was, do you breed or collect? Um, I am a, and I don't want to say a collector because I just don't collect animals. I will never own more animals than I can give that one-on-one -on -one love and attention to. Oh, where are you going? Oh, she's sitting right, right next to me, right, right next to me behind me. Um, but I would never do that. Um, so I would say that I'm a pet owner. And majority of my pets are reptiles. And breeding. So when I got all the retics, I, I paired up genetics for the fact that maybe if I want to breed one day in the future. But the reality of it is, is that um, I may end up breeding my boas um, because there's a popular market for it. But there's a saturation in the market of retics now. And there's not that many people who are buying these large snakes, you know, as not as of today. So, you know, I still think that maybe I'll give it a trial um, a few years down the line with the retics, maybe just a couple. Um, but the other thing is, is that the health of my animals is more important than me making money. Um, I don't have them for m money purposes. I have them for educational purposes. And I would even say to some level entertainment purposes. 
um, but more they are my friends. <laughs> they, they're my friends and family. And so therefore, um, some of the health risks, I don't know if I want to take with some of my animals. But like I said, I would say 95% I will definitely breed the boas for sure, for sure. Um, and that was some answer to some questions that I just wanted to respond to. Um, but overall, everything went good with this experience. Always remember the importance of having a backup plan or the, the backup purpose uh, people to help the purpose of any time that you're down and not available. Um, there were so many people um, in the community who you know, made it clear to me that they had my back if my husband needed support. Gratefully, you know, I didn't need that. Um, and I was looking like hell, so I didn't want y'all to see me looking like hell either. Like I said on the video I did before I, I came, I was not going to come back <laughs> until I felt presentable enough um, to, you know, just, you know, come back at least looking as healthy as I can. I do think that after all of my healing is done, I do feel better than what I was suffering from before. So, you know, praise God, alhamdulillah. I'm just grateful um, that, you know, I survived the surgery because that was a big fear of mine and that I have yet to have any major complications from it. Um, there was one slight complication about a weekend, but you know, my doctor told me exactly, get back in the bed, lay down, rest and that worked itself out within like three to four days. But outside of that, miss you guys. Um, like, share, and subscribe, continue to support. Um, and again, I appreciate all those who reached out to me during this period. And I'm not 100% back, but I think I should be able to at least commit to a, a video a week um, over the next couple weeks and go from there. All right, peace. Na 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 Kill them with you now Na 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 Kill them with the kill them with the kill them with the head side Kill them with you now Just make a boy know you're not blow Head side Kill them with you now Now boy ain't got no secret for your wo wo Head side Kill them with you now Just make a boy know you're not blow Head side Kill them with you now Tell them say Vega say so Me why you skin your teeth And make me see it If you're sure from your bones Say you never tweet You wanna freak One man you keep And him never get complaints Say you deep You make your bow You no answer to yo Wanna one man assembly You chow chow Need up your bro Make a guy know Say him be moving blow oh. And sing again Heads I Kill them with the no Just make a boy Know you are not blow Heads I them Vegas say so, me why hear you scream, if your mouth clean, no man never rope your heen, be no ice cream, you know smell green, like Charlene, you will have fresh, you have a healthy hygiene, so I'm assuming, while well, you keep blooming, like a pretty little lily in the morning, you're not crawling, fresh as them darling, when you're rising, them keep falling, so sing again, head side, kill them with you know, just make a boy know you're not blow, head side, with the no, no boy can't take a you fit papi show a bow, it's